we are reaching out to you with a special episode of In Conversation brought to you by Daily Mirror while wishing each and every one of you a very happy, prosperous new year. I have a very unique discussion right here for you. And today we have with us the award winning, an award winning global marketer, a management professional, and an author who has uh, channeled into his inner wildlife traveler. And with his latest creation, uh, management from the wild. 101 lessons learned. That's a lot of lessons, uh, core fundamentals you can incorporate into your life. Uh, we have with us Sarah Pereira. Happy New Year to you, Hi, Sarah. Nancy. Thank you so much for joining you with me. And uh, congratulations. Thank you for having me, actually. Oh, it's thank you pleasure. very much. Um, also, I mean, I, I, I'm, I'm actually reading the book these days, and uh, it has been an incredible experience reading into it because uh, you have uh, got out of your comfort zone, you've traveled around the world, and you're actually giving life management lessons right now, which you learn from your travels, your wildlife experiences. So I would like to know what exactly inspired you to write about life management in the angle of wildlife. I would like to know what inspired you to do this thing in the first place. So I think uh, that's a very interesting question. Thank you. So it all began with the fact that uh, with a lot of this uh, wildlife experiences, we had numerous encounters, which I'll go on to a much later. Uh, every single encounter, every single uh, trip that we did, and even how it started, had its unique story. And uh, when I just reflected on it, I realized every story was so unique and it had a take on all of it. So I think it all triggered, it all triggered uh, one story that was in Nepal when we were attacked uh, by a rhinoceros. So that's just the gist of when I kind of realized, okay, each story is so unique and I have something that I could uh, relate to to any audience so i think that was how it started it wasn't something that i did while left in the pursuit of writing something like what you already said it was just organic and i started writing a lot of articles on conservation and sustainability but in the same process i kind of realized i'm looking at things very differently and uh, how i could incorporate my wildlife stories into management lessons so that's how it was going that's incredible. And you've, you've made uh, the jungle, the forest, your wildlife experience, you made it an incredible source of education. And we never often, we don't often see it as that. We always see it as a recreational space, um, but uh, it's, it's a place that you require a lot of life management skills, of course. So why do you personally, why would you think it's important for us to travel? I mean, be it in Sri Lanka, be it in the world, why is it important for us to get out of our comfort zones, to learn to evaluate risks, to take risks? Why do you feel it's important? <laughs> that's a brilliant question again. Again, I think that's very subjective to person to person. Uh, again, my passion, which much later I realized was uh, why I left travel. It was a passion. Uh, but again, if the question is why should someone travel, it's always good to get out of your comfort zone because we are so used to a 9 to 5 job. Uh, then again, weekends we have, a, uh, you know, we do have our patients, it might be shopping, it might be going, attending classes, it might be doing lecturing, it might be many things. So we are so structured that we really don't get time to reflect on, enjoy life. So again, 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 like I said, subject to some people. It might be just sleeping, for some people it might be traveling, for some people it might be just reading a book. But again, moving out from the current zone that you are into a different environment kind of relaxes you. Especially when you get going to a park, you know, most of the time you don't have signal. This is fantastic. I mean, we are so used to having a cell phone around our hands and suddenly you're away from social media, you're away from all your other kind of points and you are with yourself and nature. So that really helps. Uh, what I also realized was, I mean, I would long to travel overseas for my life. And I realized with the pandemic, thanks to the pandemic again, you don't need to. Sri Lanka is so blessed and it does not only have to be wildlife. Uh, Sri Lanka is one country which is blessed with everything. It can be the sea, cold climate, animals, other adventurous things, historic, uh, bomb travel. So, I mean, we are so blessed. 
So what I realized was when you move out of your comfort zone and when you start experiencing different things, might be travel, might be anything else, there is a lot that you can learn. And that is uh, person to person how you take it. But I think uh, that has been uh, something fantastic. And I think people should start to travel and travel also helps economic and if you help uh, since we don't have foreign travelers coming now. I mean, people should travel. It's good for them and it's good for the economy as well. So yeah, that's the gist of it. <laughs> yes, definitely. And uh, I don't want to uh, spoil too much by telling what exactly is in here, but if you could maybe pick on like one lesson or an experience that would just, you know, stay in your heart forever from this particular book, what would it be? <laughs> that's very like scary That's a too. very, very tough question. <laughs> I'll let you. I'll let you sit and think on it a bit. I mean, it's it's nice to know that you can learn so much from the jungle. I mean, after all, we actually evolved from a life like that. And and how did these uh, core fundamentals help you in your career? You are a global marketer, a management professional. In the corporate space. Uh, how did these uh, learnings that you acquired affected you? So that's again another interesting question. So a lot of the uh, lessons I've done or learned. Uh, does relate a lot to the corporate life and also personal life as well. And I think, uh, you know, you hear a lot of people say, follow this, do this. You hear a lot of lessons, even in management theory, they give lessons. They basically teach you something. But we learn so much that it's hard to relate. So I kind of took a different twist on it. Well, I realized with the Bible, if you take the Bible, for instance, instead of just saying you should do this, uh, even Jesus used parables. So you could relate to it, right? So when these, I had these different encounters and stories, it was so easy to relate to any issue, even in office or personal life. I would relate it to, oh, yeah, this lesson works here. So actually, started, like I said, uh, with this rhinoceros attack in Nepal, and I generally travel with uh, two people. So one is my cousin, Sohan, and then other one is my good colleague, uh, good friend, Kunal. So we have been doing this trial for the last five years. So in this instance where we uh, had this encounter with the rhinoceros, all four of us reacted, uh, the three of us, including uh, the park ranger, reacted very differently. And at that point, I realized during the crisis, any corporate or any person would react the same way. So it's the four F's. So I don't know which lesson that is. Uh, let me see if I can find that lesson. Oh yeah, uh, that's lesson 77. That's the four F, crisis management strategy. Flight, freeze, flow, fight. So basically all four happen simultaneously at that instance. And that's my trigger point where when I was coming back to Sri Lanka, I actually wrote it on my phone that was two years ago. I wrote saying manage at that point. I wrote a headline saying management in the wild. Later on, it evolved to management from the wild, but that triggered because each of us uh, responded to that crisis very differently. It's a funny story, actually. Uh, I'm sure you'd have read it if you have got to level 77. I'm almost uh, listen 77 for that, but yeah, so I think almost that yeah, fantastic. I don't want to ruin it for you. <laughs> yes, and, and something that is quite fascinating is that uh, while you talk about the management lessons you learned, you also give a very detailed experience as to what, what kind of an inside look you had into the forest, uh, into the behaviors of animals, the way they you know, pursue on their defense mechanism, how territorial they are. And, and this is, this is a, you know, they're all a part of a bigger picture. You know, they play, they don't play by rules. They're a part of a food chain, you know, there are risks and opportunities. And in a world like that, it is also something that's, something that's important is that we uh, voice their rights because uh, from previous year itself, we have been trying to build a vision uh, for animal rights in Sri Lanka uh, because this is a part of an incredible ecosystem that, that has a chain reaction into our survival as well. So, I feel like you showed so much sensitivity and reception uh, to this issue uh, when you're talking about uh, life lessons in this. Uh, what's your take on protecting animal rights and, and giving voice to the voiceless, especially with the dawn of this year? What can we do as Sri Lankans to make the better changes? That's a very good question, um, Sheila. I think 2021 has to be the year that we make sustainable changes. 
And to answer your question, first let's just look at the pandemic itself. So we all believe in one law, uh, we all learned in school, and I think that's a global law that we learn is Newton's third law. Every action has an equal and opposite reaction. So the last thousands of years, whatever that we have been doing to Mother Earth, it can be deforestation, it can be industrialization, it can be every other harm that we have done. It has a way of bringing it back to us. So every action that we do has an equal and opposite reaction. And for what we have done, the pandemic itself is a very small thing that we have to expect. So we see globalization, I think 2020 was the year where we saw a lot of climate change, forest fires to walk and eruption. So I can go and speak on it uh, for a complete session on what went wrong in 2020. Not many people are aware of it as well. So the pandemic taught us one thing. It gave us a little reset for corporates and even for us as people, we kind of realized, okay, we are moving way too fast. And we start appreciating little things. When we were homebound, which we had no choice, even I started going out to my back garden and saying, wow, I do have a nice garden here. I do have animals coming here. And I mean, nature is so beautiful. You still appreciate your own things, right? So that was a big lesson there. But come to the important question that you raised, uh, animal welfare and how do we move forward? That's something that I very strongly believe in. And I think, if you were to ask me what is my favorite lesson, and this is a lesson that I have been, uh, or a quote that I've been using throughout most of my articles, journals that I write on, uh, that's lesson 90. Don't hope for change, change for hope. Because a lot, a lot of us actually just, we hope for a lot of change. We say, okay, let's hope this happens. Let's hope uh, things get back to normal. None of us need a difference for that. You know, we need to change for hope, not that we need to hope for change. So on that paradox, we need to really understand what our role is. It can be little fundamental things. And I think understanding the importance, I mean, it's very, it's a very hard pill to follow. And I think uh, we had to gradually do it. And I couldn't base a lot of that on the book. But I'm trying my best to see how we can educate. And even the book launch, which is on the 9th, I have actually uh, planned a session specifically getting the president of the wildlife conservation on board in a session on some of the interesting sustainable uh, conservation projects that they're doing in Sri Lanka and what they do to preserve mother nature. We have to realize it starts with us. Our future generations do not have animals, do not have trees, do not have water. Deforestation is that is highest in Sri Lanka. And a lot of things are changing. So we need to take a stand, uh, caring for the animals, caring for the plants, and this is not a Sri Lanka problem, this is a global problem. And again, that is something that I believe in, a uh, thing that I believe is the fact that countries fight for power, so you have nuclear wars. Then you have people fight for position, collecting all unwanted garbage, collecting polythene, trying to, you know, position. That's absolute evil. And then again, you have companies just looking at profit, maximizing profit, maximizing shareholder benefit. That's it. So when you have all three of these forces combined, we will not have a world to live in. And I think the pandemic was the best lesson that we all learned in 2020, nothing else. So I think it's very important. And I think that's something that I personally uh, speak to people, the seminars, wherever I speak, I speak on sustainability, given the fact that we all need to live, our future generations need to live, and they need to appreciate everything as well. So we cannot be selfish anymore. Cannot. We need to make change. We cannot go for change. So I think, uh, yeah, fighting for animal rights to concern, I mean, uh, public deforestation, looking at sustainable businesses, everything needs to happen in 2021. And I think uh, a lot of people are on this process right now, but I think it needs to happen much faster because. Uh, Pandemic taught us one good lesson. We don't know what 2021 has in store for us. Yeah. That's true. And maybe 2020 prepared us to make the best out of 2021 in a responsible fashion. <laughs> Absolutely. And uh, before I wrap things up, Sarat, I would like to know what is your favorite lesson from the book? Gosh, I think I mentioned that good hope for change, uh, change for hope. But again, uh, 
the favorite lesson, right? That's a good lesson. I think that is also by far like uh, a very a different angle to look at things. It's all about the yeah. mindset change. <laughs> That's probably my interesting lesson. But again, looking at different stories, I mean, uh, there's a lot of interesting takeouts. Uh, we went to Kenya with the notion that water was expensive and we wouldn't have clean water there. So my cousin said, you know what, it's going to be very expensive and they're not going to have clean water. Is that mindset we went to Kenya, imagine. And we got so scared that you won't believe we actually packed in a five liter water bottle into our main luggage. We go to Kenya. <laughs> I mean, I've not heard anyone do it that. We did it because we were scared. We didn't know, we weren't informed, right? It's just a bad, it's just a wrong notion. We went there, clean water, you have in abundance, water is cheap, you have Coca-Cola brand water. And I mean, we learn a lot that, oh gosh, we shouldn't judge just by hearing what other people share. And even what we see visually, I went to Kenya thinking it's just going to be a hot country. So my first trip, I just went with arm cuts, shorts, that's it. Thank God my friend Kunal brought an extra jersey, which came in handy because it was absolutely cold in the morning. Taking a shower in the morning was the toughest thing there. Just before entering the park so again we have this, all these wrong notions so a lot of these things i mean stories even a hippo attack the rhino attack seeing the black panther so each one has his unique story and i think each lesson itself is unique but if you are to ask me again just to repeat my favorite lesson again might not be the most interesting story would be don't hope for change change for hope well definitely hope that will be a vision to many and all the very best uh, with this creation and may it reach millions of people to make the better changes. So all the very best to you, Sarah. Thank you so much, Sherry. Thank you so much for having me. It has been a pleasure.